ePlan macros. ePlan macros are very similar to AutoCAD blocks, yet they have a few options that are quite interesting. So I'd like you to, first of all, restore a project that is on the shared folder that we have passed on to you. And it's called actually here a macro project. You decide where you want to save it here in the target directory in this restore dialog. You choose the project and you keep whatever project name or you can actually change it at this point in time. While we do the restore, uh, I'm just going to explain a little bit what the macro project is for. The macro project is actually a project that contains all different macros. Uh, macros can be individual components like PLC cards, can be also complete circuits like a complete motor circuit. Of course when you have a motor circuit uh, represented by one macro, uh, you have the possibility to have a different style of circuits like forward reverse, variable frequency drive, uh, motor overload, uh, magnetic thermal protection or separated protection. They have different options. Now these options reflect in different variants so that when a user drags and drops or actually uses that macro, you only want him to use the tab button to scroll through the different um, variants we have. So first of all, the macro has something special. The macro project has something special. It is a project um, where the type of project was modified. From a regular schematic project we've seen earlier, we actually create a macro project. This means it's not a real project. It's a project that contains in its pages different circuits that are actually saved behind a macro name. Now to define a macro name we use these macro boxes to be found under insert box macro box. When you insert a macro box you can see here this macro box make sure that you view the invisible elements if you don't see these macro boxes because they are actually turned invisible in this project. Here what we do is we define the name of the macro the representation type, in our case here, multi-line because we have a multi-line schematic, but in some cases we'll also use overline, panel layout, different styles to represent the same motor in single line, let's say. And we have the different variants. We have up to 16 different variants, which means you can actually call in this motor macro, hit the tab button, and it's going to rotate through the different variants that are saved here. Why? Because all of these are saved with the same name of macro and a different variant, okay? So that's the nice thing. Everything defined in here is then part of that so-called variant. In ePlan, we also have the option to uh, create some placeholders. We'll see that a little bit later, where you can predefine in advance different variables that will be assigned to different um, uh, properties. So uh, we'll see about this. So when you insert this, the same circuit could serve a 3 horsepower as well as a 1 horsepower or 40 horsepower motor. It's just the rating and the part numbers are a little bit different for each of these parts. That's all handled here. So this being said, I'm interested in a power, power distribution. I'm actually interested in this macro here. This macro is called power distribution distribution. So this is where it's actually saved under your standard macro project directory. And there we have a subfolder called power distribution distribution. That's the macro. To get these macros, the only thing you have to do is select whichever pages you want. You can select the whole power group here at the top level, the equal power, and then just go here to generate automatically from macro project. Generate macros automatically from macro project. Answer no to this and this will generate every single macro that is contained on all of these pages. So this means on this page here we generate this macro on the next page we generate and this macro with this variant etc. Right? So now that the macro project is done we'll just close it. We don't need it anymore and we will open the project we did yesterday. We'll actually use this project to make a copy. We'll use the project copy menu here. As you can see we have several different options. I want to copy the entire project including reports and everything else. So I'm just going to change its name. I don't like the copy of. I prefer keeping it training number two because we're on our second day here. And we'll just copy that project. 
At this point, uh, we will open page two on this project, and we will insert the window macro that we talked about. So we talked about it. It's basically in your user public ePlan data macros company name folder. You have a power and a distribution folder. Here we have a distribution macro dot EMA, and this is the one I want to insert. As you can see, it sticks to your mouse. You can hit the letter X and Y, place it, number it, and when you number it, you can actually choose your format. Remember in this format here, you could say, I want my terminal strips to not renumber. So if it's TB120, I want to keep it TB120, or TB1, I want to keep it TB1. But my general devices, I want them to number according to identifier and row, which has been preset previously in this project. So as you place it, everything numbers accordingly, and your macro is now set, as you can see.